is Boss Jeff once again. This is the final part of the review. In case anyone skipped at this point, I suggest you look at the other ones beforehand. That's going to show me unboxing it out, getting, this, getting it out of the sword bag, and also showing it for the first time out of the box. And it's better that way so you understand that I didn't modify it in any way. It's just there for just evidence sake. So anyway, this is the Shinwa Odachi sword I'm referring to. It's referred by a completely other name, referring to the... Um, Damascus steel, it's in the blade in the description on Amazon. I already linked it down below in the description box, but still, just mentioning it for the time being. Anyway, should you buy this sword, and how good is it? Well, if you saw the other videos, I cut a tree, or a couple of pine trees, which you're taking into account that they have sap as well. So, in other words, you're having another type of material that's sticky when you're making the cut, so your thing might lodge in there and stick. And this thing cut right through pretty well. So, in other words, this thing can cut pretty good amounts. Now, I've looked at the edge several times, and I've looked at the straightness of the blade to the guard connection as it originally once was. And this thing is still in shape, and the edge is still sharp, and still not nicked. So, this thing pretty much cuts well. Also, before I even did the cutting, it still pretty much keeps the blade straight still. I haven't had this thing bend or haven't heard any weird sounds as often. And the handle does pretty well in keeping itself intact here. There's nothing broken about it, nothing weird. It's not making a rattling noise anywhere like you'll see some wool hanger swords do because they're designed with loose components because they're just for decoration. So this thing's built to pretty much be a functional sword in many ways. Though the guard, I couldn't get any magnetism from when I put a magnum to it, so I'm assuming it's a type of lighter metal. I don't think it's too much of an issue when the whole thing else is sturdy, but that's just a concern for people who want to know as far as I can determine. The blade is a type of carbon steel, it says Damascus steel, but like I mentioned before, Damascus steel is just the refining ability of layering upon layering upon steel layers to make a stronger steel altogether with different layers in between. Sort of like a mixed bag, if you could call it that. But in this instance, it's pretty strong. And even then, it feels awesome. Like, the only downside to the weapon I could see is this long handle. But the thing is with Odachis and everything, the bigger the sword, you might need a bigger hand, handle to handle it better. Literally, handle to handle it better. So as a result, this thing functions almost like a pole almost, in terms of the fact that you have to use most of the actual handle to your advantage with these strikes. Otherwise, this thing handles pretty much like other weapons from Asia, pretty much, without our single-edged. You can't use this edge here. This is a single-edged blade, sorry I didn't mention. It has a point too, but here's the thing, it's just imagine... Actually, no, I'll go with this. This edge is completely dull for many reasons. One, usually single-edged blades have the other edge here, just not even sharp, and it gives you many advantages. I'll give you one. That pretty much in the case of a fight with another swordsman, and you have to parry their attack, you can't use your sharpened edge against their sharpened edge. No matter what you see in the movies, that's not even good to do. Because what will happen is, both will dig at each other, almost like two teeth grinding against each other, and the edges will wither on both of your actual blades. So you're going to damage your blade in the long run if you're going to sit there like you see in movies, like the epic showdown, you're going to lock swords and look good and then bounce off. Yeah, you're going to have broken blades at the end, or even their edges will break, and then you're going to swing, and next thing you know, oh, it's not cutting anything. Well, what the heck? Well, anyways... My recommend that what should what I recommend the sword to anyone I would in the current one that I received. I've heard generally good reviews about it elsewhere, and that's why I decided to get it. And it's fit every expectation I had of it ever since I kind of bought it. So it's fit everything I've asked for in terms of what I heard about it. I heard it was a pretty big blade. It had a pretty long handle for the blade size and reach. And generally, it's pretty sturdy, it could cut through a lot of things, and the edge is not broken down, and the blade has stayed in the hilt and it has not flown out, or the blade has not bent in the hilt. So, I, would, I recommend it to people who like big swords and the such, that are interested in Asia a little bit, and they want to get an experience of using a bigger blade like an Odachi like this. Or even then, I'm not certain on the exact specifications for it, but many people have said this kind of looks more like a Nagamaki, but I think it's an Odachi because of the um, blade here. But then again, some say because of the longer handle in comparison to the blade length that this is a Nagamaki and not an Odachi, but still, go with what you will with the classifications. 
But still, I'd recommend buying this sword if you're into the bigger swords, like I said. And generally, this thing can cut pretty well, too. It's not just something you'll just use as, like, an idle practice sword would be. Where it's unsharpened and it's made only to hit the air and nothing else. So if you hit anything else, it'll break. No, this thing's meant to, this thing's meant to cut. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. That's my conclusion about the Shinwa Odachi sword.